Hi, I'm Mayor Larry Wolgast, and I want to welcome you to the first of a series of City 4 shows to help you get to know Topeka better. Today, we are taking a look at the heart of the city, downtown and the nearby neighborhoods. The City of Topeka has made a commitment to making these areas even more livable. And not just because these areas are so affordable for residents, but also they are affordable for taxpayers. Putting more effort into the infrastructure, that's the streets and sidewalks, the water mains and sewers, in the core of Topeka will help draw residents to the areas where city services are already provided. Planners talk about population density. It is more cost effective, for example, to supply water to areas where there are several homes on a block than to areas where there is a quarter mile between driveways. Bill Fyander, the city planner, will be talking more about that later in the show. First, I'd like you to join me as we visit with a few of the people who are committed to downtown Topeka. They are growing their businesses in the city center and they are being patient while a fantastic renovation is underway. As you know, by the fall of 2015, the pocket parks, wider walking areas, and artwork will be in place. And Kansas Avenue will be a showpiece that will impress visitors and make the Pekins proud. Now let's hear from some of the people who are making their livelihoods downtown. When did, when did you open your business here? Uh, the break room was in 2006. Uh, Field of Greens Next Door is another business my family owns. We started that in 2002. Uh, so we're going on 13 years. And so you had a, a record experiences of being downtown. Tell us a little bit, what's that been like? Well, the, it has evolved a lot. In 2002 when we opened, uh, anybody I said that we were going to open up in downtown to, they, they basically looked at me and almost laughed. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, yeah. they, and not necessarily laughed, they, they felt sorry for me because they thought they had, that I had no chance mm -hmm. to survive. Um, we did that and now uh, the attitudes completely changed. We've noticed that over the last couple of years as there's been more uh, progress happening downtown and, and it's become inevitable that good things are happening here. Now we're being seen kind of as ahead of the game. You also made the choice to open, be open evenings, mm -hmm. and people I'm sure would wonder about that. When we first opened up, we tried to just open up every night in the evenings. People could come in and we'd have our menu. That didn't work uh, because there really, it takes multiple <laughs> businesses around to have them uh, come in together you know, to bring that, that area of town and make them come here. Um, so what we did is we decided we would start something that was unique that you could only get if you came downtown to this facility for. Mm. So we started our cabaret dinner theater and we started doing great shows uh, and meals here and we started doing special events to bring people in, uh, tried to tap into markets that people hadn't formerly been doing here in Topeka. We have uh, a comedy scene where we're bringing people from Lawrence and Kansas City are coming to Topeka to perform here because they really like our space uh, mm -hmm. for what we do. Uh, we have uh, jazz nights. We're working with Washburn University to bring in their jazz students who perform here. Uh, we have karaoke nights where all the people who like to do theater get together and, and you don't necessarily have to sing karaoke, but you're no. going to get a good show. Uh, so there's all kinds of things right. that happen down here. And now, of course, in the last um, year, we've had a little construction downtown. Yeah. That you. <laughs> oh, you're aware. I, I you're, saw it. A you're, you're aware. Out there. You're aware it's going on. Yeah. Right. A okay. Bit. Well, so how has that? What's the effect? Uh, and be honest now. Sure. What What's it been like? It's been a little challenging for your customers to get here to find the location. It, it has been a little bit, but for the most part, uh, one of the good things about downtown is that. Uh, the business that I, I believe that we had, and probably many of the vendors, is that uh, you know those folks were already down here working, right. uh, and so they're they didn't get you know a couple of years off for that, so they still get to come down. They still patronize us. Uh, we're not trying. We weren't trying to bring in a whole new batch of people at the same time the construction was coming. Mm -hmm. uh, so we knew that there should be some safeness there. We were safe. Uh, you know, we've noticed a little bit of a bump, but um, mm -hmm. for the most part. I think the end result is well going to outweigh uh, what we've been going through. A year from now, when it's done, yeah, 
then it will be much different. Absolutely, yeah. And we're going to see more people coming in. We, you know, we're seeing a lot of the buildings that are down, down here, they've sold uh, to different right. owners. You're seeing right. uh, a lot of them are to all local. We had some people mm -hmm. from out of town owning buildings. A lot of them have swung back to uh, local owners, which means that's going to be good for the local economy and bringing the mom and pops and, right. and keeping yeah. it as a safe area for them. Right. And it'll be local ownership, mm -hmm. local interest, and that, that spreads. Yeah. That all, almost block to block yeah. as that happens, as it occurs. And that's important to keep that uh, right. going in, in downtown. It needs to be a place where people from Topeka can start a business in Topeka and right. thrive. First of all, I have to ask, you know, Hazel Hill has been here a while. When did you open? Oh, it, 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 we're on our ninth year, so what would that Nine, be? 2005? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. And why, how did you go about choosing to be located in downtown Topeka? Well, we uh, drove around a lot and we looked, at, we looked out at the mall and out on Wanamaker, but the feeling of downtown just felt more like us. It's a, it's a different feeling to uh, shop downtown and you get to know everybody and, and the other businesses were very close. I think that's what makes the downtown. It's that feeling, it's getting acquainted with people and your neighbors mm -hmm. and you have repeat customers, very I think. Much, yeah. yeah, right. Very much. We have daily almost and then we have some that we maybe see once a year, but yeah, they come back. Yeah. Have you seen things starting to become more involved and people having a different attitude towards downtown? When we first opened, there was, on our side of the block, there was consistently at least one, maybe two storefronts that were empty. At least the last three years, it's been full on our side. Mm -hmm. And I know that, I don't know if it was because I was new and just didn't know the other business owners as well, but it seems like uh, the other, we all work together more. We're, well, when we first started, <laughs> Facebook wasn't a big thing, and now it is, and so we have a, a downtown business page that's a private group that the business owners can discuss events and mm -hmm. plan a little bit and try to work together. And, right. Well, then I know in the last year, there's been a little construction outside the front door. Just a, little. just a little, right? Two steps outside the front door. Well, and I know you've had to adjust to that. Tell me a little bit about how that has gone. Well, the hardest part is getting the word out yeah. to, to our customers. We can post on Facebook, but not everybody does that. We can send emails, but a lot of times people maybe ignore mm -hmm. emails. Um, so we try to talk with the customers as they come in. One of the things nice that the city has done is um, offer two-hour free parking vouchers. Right. For your side of the street, by this fall, another month, we're hopeful that it will be open. That's what, that's what the gentlemen that come in and update me. Do they, they keep you informed? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. And they buy chocolate? Just coming in and smelling the aromas, they, okay. All they right. get tempted. And I, I understand that you're actually uh, opening another location. It's open. It is open. Yeah, out uh -huh. in Manhattan. So your experience downtown has led you to believe it's good to be downtown. Absolutely, yeah. Hi. Very well guest. Nice to meet you. Tell me a little bit about this store. Well, um, I've actually been in this location three years, being between two of basically the, of the grandfathers of downtown Topeka, David's and Wolf's, mm. is very advantageous. Sure, good. Um, because they have a nice customer following, mm -hmm. and when they see the display windows, it's pretty inviting. Now, I understand you were not downtown, and you located down here. Tell me a little bit about that process. How, why, did, why downtown? How did you make yeah. that decision? Well, I opened at the Thunderbird Square when it was new. Mm -hmm. Croco Road was closed for eight months. So you've had some experience with uh, construction, uh, yeah. street construction. It's very dusty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that seems to be... Uh, 
the worst part of the construction. I think it's going to be fabulous when it's all yes. done. Yeah. And um, just trying to weather through it and uh, do some extra advertising and mm -hmm. let people know that we're still here. And um, so I think it's just, it's going to pay off in the long run. My business is hung right in there, clear mm -hmm. up to this point. So. And we're hopeful that once the construction is done, there'll be other businesses that will be helpful to you. Fill oh, up yeah, all yeah. the stores. Fill up the spaces. And, uh, and that all will make a difference. It's going to happen. It will. It's going to happen. <laughs> thank you very much. You're Appreciate the time, uh, and thank you for having us in your store, and have a good holiday season. We hope so. Tell me, how long have you been here? And We've been uh, in this location for 50 years, 1964. 50 years. We've been in business as Brian's leading jewelers 74 years. 74 years. Three generations. So you haven't been here that long, no. but you have seen My, a lot of change. I have indeed. Uh, so what has the, how has downtown changed? You used to have a different store across the street. We expanded and, uh, uh, to Westridge uh, when Westridge opened in yeah. 1988 and uh, we were there for 22 years and closed that location in January of 2010 and consolidated back to a single mm -hmm. store, mm -hmm. our home, Athens, yes, Kansas. Right. And, and how have you seen downtown change, say, in the last 10 years? Uh, mm -hmm. Young people coming in wanting things to do and uh, the energy is higher and greater than it's been in the past 30 years. In the last year and a half, there have been buildings sold and purchased in, in this uh, uh, four or five block area that we haven't seen turn for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of exciting things on the horizon. Now, I know there's been good organization like downtown Topeka, uh, elements like that have that has that been helpful absolutely. of communicating and uh, bringing 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 everyone along absolutely when I came back from Westridge to downtown the Heartland visioning process had been uh, in place and the capital district project uh, had been formed and mm -hmm. that's where when I became involved and uh, there was a, a real positive movement forward uh, which uh, you were well aware of at yes. that point. Well, and it took a number of years. It did. And thank you for your participation. You were there as we worked through that process, and there, there were challenges, but we overcame Still them. Are. Yes, but now you can look out the front door <laughs> and, you see, and you see stuff happening. What is happening is fantastic. Good. I am really excited about it. Well, glad to hear that. I know there have been some challenges this year for your customers to get here and the parking, but uh, how, how has it, how's business been for in spite of that? For us, it has been just fine. Uh, okay. We have not been adversely affected by the construction. We are fortunate to be on a corner, have 8th Street access, so our customer has been able to get to us. Well, Rob, thank you very much. Appreciate it, and have a, hope you have a good season. Thank you. One of the important programs of the city is a land use and growth management plan. It was done a number of years ago and it has been updated. And so today we have here uh, Bill Finder, the director of the uh, planning department. Uh, and I understand that the planning department has been working on this for a period of time, actually updating it. But I'd like to have you just give some overview, some thoughts, why is it important and, and where, where do we see going with it? The land use and growth management plan is the official city policy of where and how the city grows. And when we say growth, that's population. It's also business uh, and industrial type growth. So where those take place determines where we make our investments. We get a lot of return out on our investment if we uh, focus on where we are. We have several examples where there has been investment made private and public that has increased, for instance, the property value five, tenfold, mm -hmm. and we didn't have to add uh, more police or mm -hmm. a fire station or sewer water lines or uh, increase the road capacity. So those are all good reasons uh, that we see that we should make 
uh, investing in our current core neighborhoods and our current city limits as the priority for growth. So from the taxpayer's perspective then, we can actually have growth but not have to be extending fire, water, police, uh, sewer to new areas, which is uh, always very expensive for the city. Correct. Mm -hmm. Downtown is a great example of compact development because it's mixed use, we have lots of transportation choices, it's very dense, and we haven't needed to add a significant investment other than maintaining what we have. And we look at the area to see can we actually fit uh, this new population within the city limits. Uh, we have projected about 11, 12,000 people in the next 25 years at the current rate. We aren't going to be able to fit everybody uh, uh, in the current city limits, so we will have to grow somewhat. But that's not our uh, that's not our lead off hitter. That's not our, um, our we don't lead with that. But we do need to plan smarter at the at the fringe, mm -hmm. and grow um, compact, and with a mix of uses and and denser. And so this mm -hmm. goes back to why we have a plan. <laughs> Once in a while, mm -hmm. we need to stand back and look at it and see what's happening now. And then how do we project out for a period of time? Yeah. And that's the, the planning department. What we're doing here is we're trying to uh, recycle our, mm -hmm. the areas we have already made a down payment in. We've already mm -hmm. invested as a city. Every taxpayer has paid for the road uh, out your window. And mm -hmm. if we don't use that to its fullest benefit, then we are shortchanging uh, the taxpayers. Well, I'm glad that you do this. I think the, the citizens, the taxpayers are appreciate this type of planning and it gives uh, people an idea of, of what the city is thinking of planning so they can make plans accordingly whether they're developers or people interested whether they're investing in downtown or the neighborhoods or on the edge of town they know where we are I, I, exactly um, I use the term uh, development should follow our infrastructure and not the other way around Probably we've played a lot of catch up uh, mm -hmm. in, in the past with trying to catch our infrastructure and our services up to where the development was going as opposed to saying we will invest here, this is where we think mm -hmm. it's best and encourage the development then to follow along because that is our biggest incentive is where we put our money. As Bill Finder discussed, it is in the best interest of all Topekans to put emphasis on the core of the city. That doesn't just mean downtown. Neighborhoods like Collins Park, Tennessee Town, and Oakland are in the footprint where city services are less expensive to provide because the population lives closer together. There are still many older neighborhoods in our city that are treasures and Mara Dingman is here to tell us how one of them has been restored to its former glory. I want to see the neighborhood um, stay healthy, continue to get healthier um, as part of a whole, not just Holiday Park, as, as the center city, as downtown. As, to me, the old part of any city is the story. It's the city's story. You know, it's where everything started. It's, you know, what our, our family origins are, basically. And when you start picking away at that, you demolish homes, you let whole areas go, you lose part of your story. We took properties who, that were, you know, a certain place in the tax rolls, and we've increased their value in four, five, six hundred percent. And um, that's good for us and for the communities. If you care for them, if you keep a roof on them and keep the foundations intact, they will be here for hundreds of years. And the structures, the, the materials they use to build them, we cannot find now. It's so crazy to consider. I mean, we have, you know, thousands of square feet of maple floors here. I can't even imagine. The maple floors alone would cost more than the house did when I bought it originally. It's a great place for a young family to start out because you can get into an old neighborhood typically for a little less money. Not to say that you won't be putting some money into it, because you will, but 
again, if we, you know, Topeka or any community starts to uh, appreciate and invest and care about those areas, our values will go up. Everybody's values will go up, I believe, and you can see it evidenced in other communities all the time. The, uh, the pride that, that you get in fixing things up, I, that for me is just huge. I, nothing makes me feel better than painting and standing back and looking at what I just did or um, you know, restoring something and making it what it used to be. Neighboring is also a lost art, and, and that's part of what old neighborhoods are good for. You know, these old houses were built with the idea of coming out onto your porches and communing with your neighbors and, and having friends. And we always tout that as a benefit of our apartments here. There are so many people in this neighborhood to, to credit to Roger and Trenda Young, who have had the Devon for the last 10 years and brought that life back to that. We have Cafe Holiday, we have Salon 808. Lots of folks who've been here for a long time, you know, just keeping things going. And all the neighborhoods, Old Town, College Hill, Elmhurst, Central Park, Chesney Park, they all have value. And it all, uh, if, we, if the whole community would start to, to understand that and, and appreciate that more, I think the whole city would really benefit from that, not just people who live here. I hope you've enjoyed this look at downtown Topeka, Holiday Park, and the city's plans for future development. Helping to make such a future possible is a countywide half-cent sales tax that voters approved overwhelmingly in the November election. Extending the sales tax for 15 more years means more street improvements throughout the city. Among them are portions of Huntoon and 12th Streets, 29th Street, 37th Street, Seward Avenue in Oakland, and California Avenue. These street projects include improved sidewalks and gutters, making our neighborhoods more attractive and livable. You can see how improving our existing neighborhoods helps all Topekans. Having services closer to residents lowers costs, which can help keep taxes from increasing. Preserving existing housing means lower mortgages and property taxes, and street and sidewalk improvements make our neighborhoods more attractive. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to sharing more about our wonderful city.